going on everybody <clears throat> we'll wait for some people to get in the house this is a little early we don't typically do live streams this early but um i figured why not today it's nice and cool first chance i got to wear a hoodie all season and look who we got coming up behind me here so hold on i have to switch everything up my account got switched what? So today we're going to be talking about Fox Body, <coughs> like tips and tricks, if you will. Yeah, that's better. That's better. All right, so. What's going on, T Top Thomas? Let me get this chat pulled up so we can see what's going on with everybody today. So, I hope everybody is enjoying this nice, cool weather because, man, it is about time. I know here in the deep south, we've not had any decent weather in a while. So, what's going on, cousin Paul in the house? Where you got Neo at today? I hope you got him busy. Does the hatch striker bushing affect the hatch closing right? Yes, absolutely. Um, as a get by, you can take electrical tape and wrap around the um, actual striker and get it adjusted, of course. And usually that's a quick fix. But you can go to AutoZone and buy the striker bushings. So, yeah, I suggest you go by and do that, and uh, that'll absolutely help your hatch sit correctly. What's going on, last 5 0? <clears throat> best, Landon. Uh, best clutch cable or how not to keep breaking them. So, so far, I can't say the best. OEM is probably going to be about the best. But, I'm really, really liking the SVE cable. And it was only like 32 bucks. So far, I really, really like that cable, guys. It's nice. That's what's on the Calypso now. And uh, it definitely fixed my clutch cable issue that I had. But, I mean, you can't go wrong with stock, you know, like a factory replacement. Let's see. Perfect timing. Yeah, there we go, pimp. Absolutely, man. We figured we'd do it a little early. It's nice and cool out. It's going to get up to like 80 degrees here today, so might as well go ahead and enjoy the weather now. Talk with you guys. Uh, so Landon says that he got a hold of Leech. They're putting a tune together for me now. That's awesome, man. Yeah, uh... Matt is is the dude, I'm telling you. He is the guy. He's the guy that you want tuning your car for sure. <clears throat> I've got to get up with him uh, here pretty soon because we've got to do some more work on the green car. So that leads me into something, but I don't I want to wait until everybody kind of gets in so everybody can hear this and we can talk about it. And I'm gonna actually make a whole video about it, um, not just about the one thing, but about getting your Fox body running correctly. So remind me to talk about the Calypso. Just remind me later on if I forget, talk about the Calypso and what I found out wrong that was wrong with it. I'll do that in the next five or 10 minutes, something like that. Also yesterday, and I'm not too much for commenting on like negative comments. And it wasn't so much negative as it was the stuff that we, that we normally get from the internet. Remember guys, I always tell you the internet can be a bad place. Well, yesterday I got a comment and I wish I could pull it up for you, but basically it was like, don't be telling people to do this type stuff with a stock A9L computer, meaning a base idle reset. You guys remember the video I did where like how to make your cam sound bigger? Um, basically, you know, he was saying that the TPS, um, takes a reading from the first time you switch the key on and that's kind of what it goes by so all of this throttle adjustment and all the stuff doesn't matter you don't ever need to touch it that's what he was saying <clears throat> guys I, I tell you what just just so that because i don't want to delete the comment i don't like to do that so on my cam video the the video where i i was talking about you know making your cam sound bigger go find that comment if you can and Maybe tell people your experience, how the base idle reset has helped you or whatever the case may be. Um, because 
I don't like when people tell somebody to not do something or this won't work or this will work. Guys, we all know that base idle reset works. It does. But there's a caveat to that. The reason why it usually works is because somebody has messed with your throttle already on your car previously and it's all out of whack. Factory wise, no, you shouldn't have to mess with that. But if you do, it's probably because somebody didn't know exactly what they were doing. Anyway, if you guys will go find that comment. Uh, if I have to, I'll pin it, but I don't want to bring a lot of attention to it. But I also don't want somebody to read that and think, oh, well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do this base idle reset thing. Um, because it, you know people are telling me that it's not right. Trust me, it works and it's helped a lot of you out. Did you got some wind noise in the background? Some wind noise? Yeah. I was worried about that. Okay, so we don't now. Could everybody at least hear me though on that? All right, let me, I get on my little rant. So let's go ahead and get back to this. Have you ruined any throw out bearings from not having the dust cover? No. I've never ruined ruined a throwout bearing because of no dust cover. I have ruined throwout bearings due to improper uh, clutch cable adjustment. So there's something you guys need to know. Um, some of these cables, there's different length cables. You need to know which cable you need. So match it up to the car that you have. But the cable that was in, I think the green car, was too tight. It was too short. So it kept the throwout bearing, no matter what you did, it kept the throwout bearing always kind of engaged. So I've worn out, out throwout bearings doing that, but just make sure you have the, the, a longer cable is always better. As long as it's an adjustable cable, it's gonna be fine. And if you have a firewall adjuster. Best clutch cable, yeah, the SVE was probably one of my favorite. Boost weather, absolutely. I guess that's you, Garrett, in uh, Second Shift Racing today. Guys, if you haven't already, go out, go over and check out Second Shift Racing. Um, my buddy Garrett, man, they do a great job over there on that channel. They're up and coming, and if he keeps up with it, man, it's going to be an awesome channel. So you guys go over there, and I told him to stay with it. So, you know, you guys go over there and help him out. He's doing it. He's sticking with it. I still want you to put out more videos, though. So you guys go over there and give him some uh, constructive criticism. It's all right. He can take it. All right, uh, CMD says checking in, working on his 65 today. That's awesome. Tad, Mustang guys in the house. Tad says, uh, good morning, pimping. What's up? What's crack a lack and four? Matt in the house. What's up, brutal? Uh, how do I align my hood straight? Um, one side is sunken in. That's on the right side, and the left side is what's well, not too bad. So on the hoods, um, well, for one thing, if you have your adjusters still in your hood, you can adjust those. Look, man, these cars are, are tweaked up sometimes, right? So they've been in wrecks or the fenders aren't adjusted right. So you're going to have to do whatever you have to do. Make sure all your little bumpers are in place, the little rubber stoppers that sit on your, um, what would we call it? Not frame rail, but up, up on top of your fenders. Uh, make sure that those are in place, and then you can always just adjust from there. Now, also there is adjustment on the back side of your hinges. So the hinges that bolt to the body of the car, there's actually movement in those hinges. So you may need to move one up or down. Um, also just, you can move the fenders in if you need to. There's a lot of adjustment there. You're just gonna have to play with it. How does timing or how does changing your timing make shift smoother? I changed mine and it feels smoother. Well, um, Oren, the deal with that is it, it, it all really depends on how quickly you shift, right? So now I don't know if you're talking about an automatic or a five speed, but if your timing is too low and you're not shifting the car super fast, like just in between shifts, um, if the timing's too low, the car is going to feel like it falls on its face in between shifts because you're off the throttle and then you're back on the throttle. And the car has to pick itself back up. Uh, that's why typically a little bit of a higher um, timing will allow the car to be more responsive and peppy. So the higher the timing, the more responsive the car is. So as you shift and you go to get back in the throttle, the car is ready for you and it takes off and it just feels a lot smooth. So. Mm, UPR products, cables are good too. Yep, what's going on? We got Andrew handling in the house tonight or tonight. See, I'm so used to 
I'm so used to us doing this at night. So we got Andrew in the house today, right around lunchtime. Uh, you guys go check out Handle Motorsports. Uh, they're one of our sponsors as well. Uh, we've actually got a couple different transmission sponsors and guys that we work with, and we only work with the guys that that we feel comfortable with, right? That has good products. So you guys go over and check out Handling if y'all need anything like that, transmission-wise. James Salter says, hello, working today to get some overtime. Man, I worked overtime yesterday. Ah, oh, it sucked. Maximum Motorsports is an OEM equivalent clutch cable. Yep, Maximum Motorsports, pretty much everybody will tell you that. But so far, guys, I've really liked this SVE, but I've not put a lot of miles on it. I'll admit that. But uh, so far, so good with that. If I swap heads marked all my timing on needle top of distributor and bottom and block on my distributor, will my car still be in time? Everything is back together. It was my first head swap. What? That was a lot. All right, hold on, guys. If I swapped heads marked all my timing on needle top of distributor and bottom and block, yeah, um, Justin, it should still be in time. As long as you didn't spin the motor over, yeah, it's fine. You don't even have to mark anything. So um, let me let me say this, because this is something I always like to remind you guys of. If you're working on your car and you have to pull the distributor, a lot of people are scared of having to get top dead center again and don't want to get into all that. What you do before you pull your car apart is take a picture of which way your button was pointed, so the, the needle, if you will, the top part of your, your uh, distributor. Make note of where that, that thing's pointed. Pull your distributor out, set it off to the side. As long as you do not spin your engine over at all, you can just put that thing right back in. I don't care if you're doing heads, I don't care what you're doing. As long as you don't spin your engine over, you can drop that distributor right back in and get after it. Then the only thing you'll have to do is just adjust the timing, right from say like eight degrees to 14 degrees, you know, something like that. Um, I actually never really, hardly ever do I ever go to top dead center. Um, I'll have a good idea of where it is and I'll stab the distributor in, I'll spin it over. If it's not right, I can usually tell whether it's high or low and I'll just jump a tooth. But that's just me. I don't necessarily advise everybody to do that, but um, it works. And you can be a tooth off and the car still run. You can compensate, sometimes, sometimes, you can compensate by basically just advancing the distributor around. I've done that before. Ford Matt, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. What's your thoughts on 355 gears? For mild 331 uh, V1 S trim for street driving, uh, is it too little or just right? So 355 gears, guys, is going to be about money. Um, 373 is really good with a centrifugal supercharger. That's what my dad's car has, and honestly, I I think if you can get away with 373s, that's going to be your best bet. And what I mean by that is, as long as you can hook the car. Obviously, the more gear you have, the quicker and easier this thing's gonna spin. But um, yeah, man, you can't go wrong with 355s or 373s for a centrifugal car. Uh, remember guys, centrifugal, uh, a centrifugal blower is not the same as a turbo. And where I can get away with 327 gears, you're not gonna wanna do that with, or I say you don't, most people don't wanna do that with a centrifugal supercharger. How much to install heads and cam? <clears throat> How much to install heads and cam? Ah. I don't know, I have no clue. I've never paid anybody to do it, but it's probably gonna, man, I don't know. I really don't know, man. I, I'd say possibly, I don't know, you guys help him out. How much would it cost if you took your car to a shop to install heads and cam? I really don't have a clue of what that, that's assuming that you already have the heads and you already have the cam. How much would somebody typically charge for something like that? I would think minimum of four, 400 bucks, probably six, four to 600 bucks. You guys help him out on that. You know I'm gonna suggest you try to do it yourself. But if you don't, you know, if you're not comfortable with it and don't have the knowledge, then then don't. Uh, so Larry says, good afternoon, Brutal. Love watching your, uh, love your channel. I'm adding stuff in here. It's been helping me out. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right, are Brodick's heads good? Uh, Greed says, absolutely, man. Brodick's are awesome heads. It depends on which CC you go with, things like that, of course. <clears throat> um, sprayed 
mine fifth once four tens and a 150 dry shot but yeah <laughs> so don't do that guys if you <laughs> never spray your car in fourth and fifth gear if you can help it i mean fourth gear if you're in a drag race or something <laughs> yeah but it's, it, definitely stay out of fifth gear spray in your car bad things can happen 355s so john doe says 355s are a solid all-around choice in my opinion yeah absolutely man four tens can be a bit much it depends on your setup what is your choice of gears for five-speed turbo car? Choice for gears on a five-speed turbo car. Anywhere from a 308 to a 331 gear. Now, if you're drag racing, you can get away with a 355 gear if you're drag racing. But uh, just, you know, around town, things like that. Like, if, you, if it's just a street car, I would stick to a 327 gear. That's me personally. I have a 331 gear, which... <laughs> Wasn't enough of a difference to go out and buy a set. I don't even know why I did that. 327 would have been just fine. <clears throat> Definitely no more than a 355, in my opinion. $1,000 for heads and cam install? Jesus. See, that's why I do my own work. I can't, I can't afford to pay people. Mm. Okay, so I want to go ahead and talk to you guys about something that I have found out. This has happened to me twice, so now it's time to talk about it. We're going to make a video talking about this. I'm going to add it in with a couple of other things that you need to check if your uh, Fox body is not running good, if it has um, a misfire, if it's just like erratic. Some of you guys will know what I'm talking about. There's a couple different things going on here, but your TPS. Your TPS can cause your car to misfire or it's gonna feel like it's misfiring I, I assume it might actually be but not misfire in the traditional sense your TPS can cause your car to as you're cruising feel like a misfire now this is the second time it's happened to me and it took me forever to figure out what it was and it was the damn TPS sensor so if your car is not running good and you're driving down the road and it's just got kind of a, uh, like a stutter, right? Just kind of erratic. And you've changed plugs, you've changed wires, you know you don't have a blown head gasket, you know, things like that. <clears throat> check your TPS. And what do I mean by check your TPS? Pretty much just replace it. Um, because it's gonna be hard to find the issue that I'm talking about unless you attach the leads Unless you just like attach your leads to the wires and then um, you know pull the meter inside with the car with you and you can kind of see this happening it's gonna be really hard to know what happens is these TPS sensors when they start to kind of go out is the voltage jumps so at idle it'll be fine but as soon as you start putting some input in this TPS is just jumping all over the place now how did I find that out well the Calypso has the screen, right? It's a Holly, so it's got the screen and I can monitor my TPS. And as I'm riding down the road, like I know everything's good with the car. It shouldn't be skipping and missing and stuff like that. I look down and I see my TPS number just jumping all over the place at steady throttle. I let off the gas, it goes to zero and it stays to zero. I have been chasing this issue off and on, off and on for a while. It'll kind of go away sometimes and it's just weird. Also, something else you can do if you assume that that might be the problem is just go wiggle the cables going into the TPS, um, and that may clear it up enough for you to know that that was the problem. But guys, TPS sensors, you know, we never really talk about them going bad. It's just either they won't get you in the right range or they, they work, right? No, there's more to it than that. These things, this is the second time, and Matt over at Leach Motorsports can verify this because we were on the phone together and he's like the first time it happened he's like dude your tps is jumping all over the place now if you had a stock car you would never know that right if you didn't have some way of monitoring it you'd never know it <clears throat> it feels just like a plug wire right like a burnt plug wire or a bad plug or maybe even a coil so if you're having that problem and you cannot chase it down you cannot get to the root of the problem check that tps it very well may be uh, very erratic and causing these problems. How's the drivability on Andrew's car after the cam swap? Perfect. Andrew's car drives perfect. If there's one thing I'll say about the 
B21 cam, which is what we put in his, versus say like a B cam, his car is way more drivable. You pretty much can drive that thing just like a stock car. Like, it doesn't really matter. Um, I think you could get in it and go and it not, not cause any issues. Plus, that base idle reset that we did on that car, you know, the thing you're not supposed to touch, the throttle blade. Yeah, well, his car runs perfect. And I don't know what to say about it. Like, I, I think I'm gonna have to do a video where I finally like had enough of all the internet trolls and the people saying what won't work and what will work. I think we're just gonna have to just do a hateful video and uh, explain to everybody, you know, this works. Because sadly, if you're not assertive in this world, especially on YouTube, when nobody's gonna bother you, right? You're safe behind your camera. You know, if you're not assertive there, then nobody's ever gonna really listen to you. They don't take you seriously. So it looks like we're gonna have to have an assertive video, I guess, so that people understand. Um, these things work, guys. I'm, I'm giving you tips and tricks that may not be in a book. And if you went to school, if you're an ASC certified mechanic, you may tell me that this stuff doesn't work. Well, I don't know what to tell you because these things that I do keep these cars running. Now, whether it's supposed to work or not, I don't know. Whether it doesn't work the way that I think it works and it's just tied into something else, I don't know. All I can tell you is it works. And that's the information that I try to put out to you guys. So I didn't go to school, I'm not a Ford tech, I don't know all that stuff, but I'm telling you this shit works. Andrew's car drives perfect. I mean, seriously. Now, he's got a misfire in his car. You know what? Now that I think about it, it could be the GPS in his car because it's acting very similar to the way mine was. But his car drives perfect. Just letting you guys know. Yes. Thanks, John Doe. T-Top Thomas. Thank you, man, so much. <coughs> man, I, I, I keep a cough. I've always done it my whole life i don't know why ever since i was a little kid i had to clear my throat constantly i was like i always thought you know as a little kid i'm like man even if i had the best singing voice in the world i could never be a singer because i have to stop and like clear my throat every two minutes so it's like it's something i've always dealt with but i might have that wrong i don't know i mean who knows right <laughs> you feel sick yet okay. sounds good to me uh can you explain more on the n41 cam and on being more drivable than the B. I, I don't know, I've never had the N41 cam, but I do hear that it's more drivable than a B cam. So I can't really speak on that. A B cam is not as streetable as you might think. I say streetable. It's not as neighborhood friendly. That's, that's always what comes to mind because I have to drive my ass around this neighborhood, creep out to get anywhere I'm going on my car and you know, it wants to kind of buck a little bit. It's not bad. Uh, you just have to learn your car. Some of these are just not gonna work you know, the way you want them to. But I will say that that B21 is, is one of the smoothest cams out there. <clears throat> Some cars just run well no matter uh, how many mods you throw at them. Yeah, that's true. FOMO Co is 100% correct. My dad's car, oh my God, this thing drives almost like factory. It makes no sense. Now, if you lug it too much, you know, in first or second, yeah, it'll kind of buck a little bit, but like you have to make it do it. His freaking car works great and it's not even tuned, so yeah. We got next gen car guys in here. Um, tell us about the difference between going from Mega Squirt to Terminator X and uh, which one to do with an on three kit and uh, turbo. So Chris asked, there's nothing wrong with the Mega Squirt. Please, guys, don't, don't think. That there's anything wrong with a mega squirt. Hello. Okay, there's nothing wrong with this. This is freaking awesome. And as a matter of fact, it's even more user friendly in a sense. In a sense, the layout of it, the everything else. Look, there's no there's no easy button. The uh, there's no magic pill. The Terminator X. There's just more people that know how to do it, know how to work on it, know how to help you. Uh, it is a little easier to set up. The Mega Squirt gives you parameters, like the ability to change parameters that really we don't need to be messing with. Like I wish Mega Squirt would have just preset a lot of this stuff because most people that use this are gonna be basing it off of a stock computer. They don't do that. Holly better sets their bass tunes and things up more around the factory computer. It's just, it's just a little better, okay? But 
Ultimately, it's not gonna make any more horsepower. We talk about this all the time. Just because you went with the Terminator X doesn't mean your car is gonna be faster. None of that, none of that. If you can set this thing up, it'll be just as fast or faster than the Terminator X. It doesn't matter. Who's your inspiration in cars? Who's my inspiration in cars? That would be my dad. Um, my dad, I've watched him my whole life paint cars, build cars, race cars. Uh, he's my inspiration. I mean, he, he, my family and the way I grew up are what keep me going. Um, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't really, I don't have any heroes out there in, in the world other than basically my parents. Uh, I don't, I just, I don't know. It's my dad. Actually, my mom too, if you think about it, because of hell. What, uh, Mimi would get out there and race and, and like, I watched my mom and my dad race. My dad would drive the, um, the 88 GT that we had and my mom would drive the 73 Mach 1. Now the Mach 1 had a 460 in it, uh, cam, intake, carburetor and headers and uh, built transmission, right? And she would drive that, if I'm not mistaken, and my dad, I, either way, I can't remember, but they, they would get out there and race these cars all the time. And uh, I couldn't help it. So yeah, like my inspiration goes all the way back to my childhood with my parents. I mean. Shout out to Papa T. Yeah, shout out to Papa T. Uh, fake snake, uh, da, 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 da. hello from Sweden. What's going on, Patrick? Uh, other than the Mega Squirt, uh, what are the tuning options on a 90 EFI motor with a stock computer? So T-Top, uh, I mean, you can still do the whole chip thing. There's nothing wrong with that by any means. Um, just open your computer up so that you can take and get it tuned. That's perfectly fine. Um, uh, quarter horse, obviously that's what Neo uses, <clears throat> or at least for now anyway. But uh, all that stuff will work. No, no issues there. Um, there are some other companies out there, but I can't remember. You guys help them out on tuning options um, for, oh, for an 85 LX. Oh, 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 oh. So 85 meaning still uh, EF5, late 85, I assume. I just spent $650 on a rebuild. Uh, what? John Doe, you spent $650 on a rebuild A9L? Explain this to me. Why would you do that? That's that is horrible, horrible. Woo, Lord. Uh, no, I'm not going to Foxtoberfest. I will be going to the LMR Cruise Inn. So if you guys, who all is going to the LMR Cruise Inn? Go ahead and sound off now. And uh, <coughs> I'll go ahead and let you guys know ahead of time. We're gonna sell some merch while we're out there in Texas, but we're gonna have to do it from our hotel parking lot. So just kind of, if you're not on Instagram, you might want to get on Instagram if you want some merch, if you're going to be around there, because that's where I'll probably post it. I may do something on uh, on YouTube. But yeah, um, we're not allowed to sell merch at the event, so we're just going to, probably me and Foxcast will probably get together for an hour or so and sell some merch maybe out of the hotel parking lot or something like that. But we do have some new shirts coming. I'll go ahead and tell you guys because it's not, not going to matter. Remember the... Um, Stand by. Let me just pull up a picture of it. This is going to be the easiest thing to do. All right, you you ask questions while I look for this. Okay. Um. Hey, I'm doing an AOD to T5 swap right now. Which way is your clutch cable routed? The, the best way you can get it routed. If you have a stock K member, <sighs> around by the um, motor mounts, down that area. Um, I've seen them in different places before, so just kind of play around with it. You can you can get quite a bend on that cable and it not kink up. I mean, you have to be careful, obviously, but typically you can get a little more bend on the cable than what people uh, think you can. But just wherever you can kind of get it to go. What's a guilty pleasure of your outside cars? Guilty pleasure? Oh, man. I am a... Outside of cars. I am a fragrance guy. I'm a cologne guy. I freaking love cologne... I buy, <laughs> I buy it all the time. I'm big into more of the niche uh, stuff. So I like cologne. I like uh, RC cars, you know, mm -hmm. uh, into them. Um, I make my own e-cigarette, you know, e-juice. I make that. I've got hundreds and hundreds of bottles of that stuff. So I make that. I don't know. What else do I do, really? 
guilty pleasure though. Kind of just something that just like, mm, I just gotta have. It's probably the fragrance. The fragrance and RC cars. I don't know. Stuff like that. Anyway, let me go back to this. Always got the new cones. Yeah, always. So what niche houses do you guys wear? Like something, and look, if you don't know what I mean by that, then I'm not talking to you. <laughs> but but uh, you guys that, that wear some off the wall stuff, and we'll see if we wear any of the same stuff. There's one niche house that pretty much everybody knows if you're into that type stuff. <coughs> Where did I put this thing at? John Doe hmm. said I had no other choice at the time. Brother, man, I wish you'd hit me up. I could have got you. I had a couple computers. I just sent one to somebody. Who was it I sent one to? I don't know. I can't remember. All right, back to this, back to this, because I'm, I'm messing myself up here. It's your fault, Aubrey. Oh, you, you told me to. Um, oh, where are we at? Is this it? Is this it? Is this the one? Uh, I'm looking for this picture, this shirt. But read me something. What are you doing? You're just like staring off in the la la land over there. Um. And. Uh. I, I'm trying to figure out how to say that. Okay. 89 vert, 5 speed, all stock, temperature gauge jumps around. Sometimes it gets to 3 quarter up to gauge and falls back to the middle. There's a. Uh, anti-slosh module in the back of that um, cluster. Check that. Uh, what, you say, what model is it? 89. Yeah, 89. There'll be an anti-slosh module on the back of the cluster. Pull your cluster out and there'll be like this. Now, some, they change through the years, but should be like this chip, this card that's pushed into the backside of your cluster. It's going to look like literally like a... Um, Thing like a floppy disk almost, if you will, or SD card. But it's kind of big. Check that, make sure it's not corroded up. Uh, if that thing is bad, oh boy, they're expensive to find. So, but yeah, that's probably what it is. That module just keeps the uh, the gauge from radically, you know, just moving all around. So if that thing's bad, it can cause it to swing. I'm not saying that's absolutely 100% the problem, but more than likely, that's what I would check. All right. So this shirt set up right here, guys. Check it out. This is what we will have ready for the LMR cruise in. Uh, should be ready by Wednesday. So if you guys want to order those, we'll have them up. And also the <clears throat> the Fox Body Illuminati shirts. We're still waiting. I don't know what the deal is. So we're gonna have to go through somebody else, I guess, on those because it's just not working out on those. So. Fox Body Illuminati shirts will be coming uh, at some point. I don't know. We need to get some uh, sweaters and hoodies and things like that. So, Canadian Superman approves. Absolutely. Gucci Select. Let's hear some niche houses, guys. Let's hear some stuff that nobody wears that's, that's kind of different. Um, hey, man, I do like Tommy Hilfiger. Absolutely. Oh, we got, we got a couple in here. Gasoline is a favorite of mine. I wear polo. Polo black, nothing better. Basically brutal saying he smells like a Johnny Depp commercial. I don't wear Sauvage, brother. I don't, I don't, no. Sauvage is not my thing, man. It, that, that stuff stinks. Listen, you guys got to try Mancera. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, okay? Because I love fragrance. We can sit here and talk about this crap all day. Now, I've not had all of it. You know, I've never had a bottle of Creed, you know, Aventus. I have a bunch of clones. <laughs> Pineapple Vintage is probably my favorite. Um, Man-made, man yeah. Man-made is awesome as well. But Mancera is a, a house you need to check out. They got one called Rad, uh, Rad, Red Tobacco that's awesome. So you guys check that stuff out. If you want something a little different, check it out. Uh, Cedrop Boise from Mancera is, whew, that is good. It's got like a leather in it it's a citrus leather it's awesome old spice absolutely diesel yeah okay i'm seeing some good ones in here i mean there's nothing wrong with uh yeah one million absolutely oh he said 
Fake Snake said that uh, that's for the fuel gauge, not for the temp. Oh, so he said temp gauge? That's what I said that. Well, I thought you said fuel gauge. Okay, so temp gauge, um, that's probably just going to be the gauge. Because the only thing that controls that is the, is the one um, sensor up there on the uh, intake. So that's probably just going to be an issue with the cluster itself, more than likely. Or, yeah, something like that. But if you guys are having issues with your fuel gauge doing that, then go back to the anti-slosh module. Yeah, I said floppy disk, I'll show my age, absolutely. Aqua Digio in the house, Hugo. Um, Brew, will uh, heads cam swap for your car? Brew, will heads cam swap for your car for a couple bottles of cologne? <laughs> I don't know about all that, I don't. Oh, Lord, man. I don't ever want to do another head cam swap, but I know it's coming. We're going to have to do it at some point. Thoughts on full autometer setup versus digital dash. I like the uh, autometer setup, to be honest with you. Uh, but I like it. I mean, either one. Either one is really, really cool. I like the autometer, though, because, like, I mean, that that's hardware, right? That's not just software running. I mean, this is true hardware sitting up there in the dash, and I think it looks freaking sick. But... I'm not so old that I don't like the new digital dashes. Man, they're badass too. It just depends. Whatever you want, you can't go wrong. I guess the cost <clears throat> of that project to swap Hellcat motor would be costly, no? I guess the cost of that project to swap, uh, yeah. Thanks for your help, sending unit. Yeah, I mean, sending unit could be, could be bad, but typically what I've found in a sending unit that is that they just quit, right? They just don't work anymore. Uh, never really had a sending unit that would uh, allow the car to just like the gauge to move up and down. We're back to talking about fuel again, obviously. I do, <laughs> I do know what I'm talking about right in a second. Uh, so yeah, I've had that. I've, I've never had that particular issue with it being a sending unit, but I've definitely had it with the anti-slosh module. Now mine, mine was just corroded. So I went in and cleaned that thing up and believe it or not, it worked out fine. And I want to say that was in the red car that that happened with, um, let's see. I found some oil on my spark plugs. Do you think the valve seals are piston rings? Car doesn't smoke at all. Um, so you found oil deposits, and or was it just like the plug black? Because you know a lot of times if you got something when it's not firing good, it'll look like oil. Obviously, it'll just be wet and kind of sticky. Um, but if the car doesn't smoke at all. I'm not the kind to worry about that type of stuff, man. I throw some plugs in it and go. But that's just me. I'm not gonna sit there and sweat over it myself. Uh, when it goes, it goes, or if it gives me any other signs, I would go, but if it's just a couple of deposits, it, dep well, it depends on how bad it is now. So let, let's find that out first. Yeah, I'm thinking too rich as well. I could hear someone talking, just noticed you were hiding in my pocket. Who said that? Uh, automotive addiction. Oh. Uh. Let's see, on the threads? Oh, if it's just on the, if it's just on the threads, man. Don't, I don't, yeah, don't worry about that. That's, if it's on the threads and there's a good chance, I mean, was it, the valve cover gasket could be leaking and it run down and actually get on there. But if it's on the threads and then the rest of the uh, plug looks good, man, slap that shit back together and go, man. That's just me. I mean, that's what I would do, but. If you want to further investigate, it's it's it, it could get. Ooh, Lord, I don't know, man. I don't know where you'd go from there. Do a leak down, maybe. Um, did you convert to LEDs on all of your cars? No, just on the uh, red car, just on Retro Fox. You put LEDs in the original? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, I did that right after I first got it. Um, Mustang guy, sixty five oh one. Brutal, would a set of GT40 heads work on my 65? I'm thinking about going with a junkyard hunt for some. Yeah, man, they'll work on the 65, uh, no problem. 289, 302, all the same stuff. Um, be careful with the cam selection uh, on that. Um, guys, let me, let me ask you guys a question. Somebody was saying that there's a difference. There's a difference with a GT40P head and a, and a stock head as far as like piston to valve clearance. Now, typically I would just say absolutely not, but 
seems like maybe I heard this before or, or something like you have to be careful with say like you're running, I don't know, let's just say we're running an F cam, right? Which is not really something you want to be running on a stock car anyway, stock bottom end, but let's just say you do. So you got your, your, your stock heads and you put a, a F303 cam in it and it does good. And then you go to a GT40, I guess P heads, what they were saying. Is there a difference? And there shouldn't be a difference in valve angle or anything like that. I just want to make sure because this question was asked and for some reason I can't remember and I want to, you know, help as many people as we can. Good to know. Uh, ba -da -da -da. Yeah, man, I, I, I'd say ET, so look now, I, I can't guarantee you that, that there's not something wrong with your car, but if you're just getting a little bit of oil on the threads and the, and the plug itself looks good, man, send it. Just send it, brother. Brutal, gonna start plugging cologne like Ben Shapiro. Try this week's fragrance, Foxy Cold Start. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, that would that would actually be good. Actually, the Mustang cologne smells pretty good. It's not not too bad. Trick flow. Uh, they have done studies, you know, seventy percent of the time it works every time exactly. There is a piss in the valve clearance issue just to be safe. <clears throat> okay, so you see, we tend to already be, be getting some mixed mixed things here. I don't think, that it, look, this is what I'll say it boils down to. As long as the, the angle on the heads are the same, angle of the valves are the same, and the valve size is really close, should be fine. But uh, yeah, man, I, that one just kind of got me. I need to do some more research on that. Ever done full trick flow street burner top end kit? No, nope, never done that. I believe the P heads have slightly smaller combustion chamber than the three bars. Yeah, so the combustion chamber difference shouldn't really matter a lot though. A little smaller, yes. Okay, so that's really hard to say on that. But yeah, I mean, if you're wanting to put a set of GT40 heads on a 289, yeah, man, you wouldn't have any issues. Uh, I, don't, I don't see any issues there. Well, hell, what am I thinking of? Let's just back up here. Andrew has GT43 bar heads on his car with a B cam and 17 roller rockers, no issues there. So, I mean, this has been done a million times over, but that's not really what the guy was asking before. So, I don't know, I've talked myself into a corner with this. I don't really remember exactly what the question was, but I just remember I was like, I need to, I need to research that. Okay, so B-Dub says that uh, he remembers something about the GT40 uh, heads and 17 roller rockers, so maybe GT40P, is it the P that's the issue? I've been looking at budget AFR heads, the enforcers. Have you heard much about them? Nah, man, I've not, not ever even heard of those, Landon. Always good to check piston the valve clearance just to be safe, yep. Uh, the valve angle is the same, the spring locks are in a different place, and the combustion chambers are a little smaller. I run P heads on my car. There you go, guys, I'm good info. I'm not, I'm not really up to date on the, on the P heads and G, like, that was never a thing. You gotta understand for like my age group, by the time, you know, I kind of got a little older, everybody started putting, you know, GT40 heads and things on cars. And I just, I don't know, man. I just, I, would, I never really got into it. I was already doing the uh, aftermarket head thing at that point. But uh, I do remember the GT40, uh, what the X heads that came out, the aluminum heads, those were pretty good. So I just don't know a lot about them. Have you heard the tone difference on a Fox body between using stainless and aluminum exhaust pipes? Yes, absolutely. There's a huge difference between uh, stainless and aluminized pipe or, you know, your standard pipe. Absolutely, especially if you've got tailpipes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, one of my good friends, Ronnie Spivey, back in the day, he had one of the best sounding LXs I had ever heard in my life. And it was full stainless. I don't know how much money he had in that exhaust, but this was back in the late 90s. My God, that thing sounded good. It has a, a ping to it that nothing else has. So yeah, there is a difference, man, for sure. Now, if you're just gonna be running turndowns, something like that, you probably won't notice that much of a difference. But I also run 17 Roller Rockers. I can't find the hatch striker bushing on the AutoZone website. Uh, you're not going to, Christopher, it's not gonna be labeled as a Fox Body hatch bushing. Just go in there and go to the help section and you should be able to find one in there. Also, you can cut that. I've seen that done. So like if you can't find the exact one that you need, 
Uh, just go get you a bushing that may be a little, uh, the opening may be a little smaller. You can always cut that thing, slide it around it like that. You can always put a little bit, piece of tape or something like that around it, but I've seen people do that, no problem. But man, they should have those bushings there. So they're just not gonna be labeled for Fox Body. They're just a universal bushing. Take yours off though when you go up there, unless you don't have it, I guess. And there's that. That's a good question. What? Uh, when is Aubrey gonna start driving the retro? Nope. Never. Never. Oh, especially not now. But we may be doing a little something, something to the retro. Like what? A little something, something to the retro fox. Uh, I'm not telling you. You'll tell them. But we may be. How may, can I tell them? I don't know. We may do that. <clears throat> I had a nice combo back in the day. X303 cam, GT40X heads. That, that actually was a very kind of, not common, but that was one of the nastier setups that I had ever run across back in the day was GT40 X heads with an X cam. That's a pretty healthy setup there, man. Yeah, just wrap it in electrical tape. Uh, man, if you can't find the striker, just wrap it like 20 or 30 times electrical tape. I mean, it's, it's a get by, it'll work. So there's, there's ways of getting around this. LMR sells the bushings. Yeah, I mean, you can order the bushings online. I was just trying to help you if you wanted to run out today and go get something, AutoZone or O'Reilly maybe, something like that, you should be able to find something. Um, why do you like hood liners? Oh, why don't I like? I, I like hood liners. I just don't bother with, I don't know. Just don't. I need to get some. I need to get a hood liner for both cars. I just haven't done it yet. So it's not that I don't like them. I actually love them, but I don't know. Could a cracked reservoir cause overheating or getting uh, air into the cooling system? No, man. Uh, you can take that reservoir completely off and uh, shouldn't really have an issue. If you're getting to the point to where the car is starting to overflow, um, that's you know about really the only time that you should be able to uh, or, or need to use that reservoir. But no, nah, man. Uh, sorry, I, I, you got other problems more than likely if if if, th if that's what you're thinking it was. Um, I have a QA1 front K member, uh, it's supposed to be, turns out it moves front wheels forward. Yeah, I've never used the uh, QA1 uh, K member. <clears throat> so you're saying that it moves the front wheels an inch forward? I'm afraid to use it, any thoughts? <clears throat> I don't think mine moved it at all, but I don't know guys, have you ever run the QA1? Uh, and what's your thoughts on it? There we go, there we go. GT43 bar and Anderson B31 cam. Is a valve spring upgrade necessary? Yes. Yes, you definitely want to upgrade valve springs on that. But luckily the valve springs are cheap. Uh, no problem there. Uh, install, eh, no, it's not too bad. If you're, if you're gonna be doing all this stuff anyway, if you're gonna have the heads off the car, it's very, very simple, please. Please, it's very simple. Don't overthink it. Go ahead and swap your valve springs out if you're gonna have the heads off the car. Nothing to it. And then you'll be good to go. You'll make that cam hit a lot harder and a car will run better for sure. <clears throat> Old school V1 for the retro. I don't know if it's gonna be a V1, but we may do something. I lost my wallet. Do you know where it is? It's sure not over here for sure, because like I think I lost mine as well. Vibration was failure to blueprint the engine assembly, the crank. So that's not good, man, if you had that. TJ, I appreciate it. Had a SCT, SCT chip tune and uh, now no power to radio or console. Checked all connectors around ECU, any thoughts? Had SCT chip tune, so did you take the car somewhere and get it tuned? Or are you saying that when you put the chip in the car, that's when you lost all of your power? Um, I don't know, man. Um, maybe, uh, it shouldn't be the EEC relay. Uh, guys, help him out on that. It's the highlighted comment there. I, I'm trying to think, man, I'm drawing a blank in a way. I don't know, give us a little more detail. Yeah, fuse maybe, something like that. What K member do you use on the Calypso? Uh, <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> what is that? 
It may be a QA1. I don't, I don't remember. No, I don't think it's QA1. It's a, a UPR. UPR. And it works great, by the way. Did I hear something about the deck being thin uh, and the budget AFR heads? Never. I've not heard anything about that air cooled. Um, I was told if I stayed with 16 inch rims, there, there's no issue with rubbing. Well, 16 inch rims, none of that. Well, I say none of that. It shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter, right? Because ultimately, <coughs> the overall diameter of the wheel is all that matters. So you just run a smaller tire if you're going with a bigger wheel. But maybe width wise could be an issue. I don't know, man. I, I couldn't do that. If, if, if it were me, I wouldn't be able to do that if I was going to be limited to like a really small wheel and tire or something, you know, like a narrow or something. I don't, I don't know. Might do a little more reading into that. <clears throat> How high is stock uh, 5.0 capable of reliable, reliably, reliably revving, assuming uh, you can make the power? Um, just the short block capabilities. Man, that's I, I, about 60 foot. Let me read that again. Just, just hold on. So like, okay, so we'll say stock bottom end and uh, you put heads, cam, whatever. Man, 6,500, I've not seen any issues there. Even more than that, honestly. If you have the valve train to support it and the cam and the airflow and the fuel, the bottom end, will, it'll turn some pretty high RPM, but I'd say 6,500. <clears throat> Yes, dyno tuned. Hmm. So, after after you got it dyno tuned, nothing's working. Man, that just sounds like, yeah, it just sounds like something simple, man. Like no fuse or, and I know you've checked all that, but it's gotta be something simple. Something got moved around somewhere. I don't know, I don't know. Felt my Fox body when warm blows, black out the exhaust, tried math, timing, etc. help. Sounds like you have a fuel pressure regulator issue. If, um, if your Fox body is blowing smoke out when it's warm, my thought would be that the fuel pressure regulator is not working correctly and is dumping too much fuel. When the car is cold, it can use more fuel, so that may be why it's not spitting as much black smoke out whenever it's cold. Uh, pull the vacuum line off of your uh, fuel pressure regulator and see if there's any fuel in that vacuum line. You can also, while the car is running, usually hold the vacuum line that goes into the top of the regulator and see if it's cool to the touch. As it's, If that, that thing busts, it'll suck gas through it and the gas will actually cool off that line so you, sometimes you can just feel it. That'd be my, my guess. How hard is it to tune around Excel 30 pound injectors on a 91 stock ECU? It's not hard at all, Matt. Uh, at least for us, we put 30, 36 pound injectors in my dad's car and we just did the mass air meter to match and did a base idle reset. <laughs> you know that thing that doesn't work? Yeah. It worked on his car, great. Did you wire your AC with- All right, terminated? fake snake. Oh, sorry. What? Um, I said, did you wire your AC with the Terminator X? If so, is it difficult to do so? Uh, I've not wired the AC yet. I think somebody is making a kit that's like a plug and play kit for these cars for the Terminator X. And honestly, I was just kind of waiting on that. Uh, I've not looked into it recently. It may already be out, but it's, I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't going to get super like into it. I was pretty much just going to make this thing work and uh, not worry about it. So bypass a few things here and there. And, uh, but it's kind of why I waited because I'm not like into figuring out what makes this work and that work and like all that type of crap. I wasn't really into that. So I just needed my AC to work. So I was just going to hardwire it essentially on a switch. <laughs> but don't do that. <laughs> but I stopped because, and I didn't do that obviously because I, supposedly there's a harness out there. So there's a harness that's more plug and play. <clears throat> Sounds like a bad ECT sensor. Um, FOMOCO, yeah, but you know, typically as the car warms up, the ECT, the, the, the car will idle better. That's my only thought there, but it's still, yeah, it could be. Because I think the ECT sensor um, defaults to like 181 or 187 degrees, 
So in theory, it should be fine. I think, or at least it does on the green car. I'm not sure on that. But yeah, I mean, check the ECT. It won't hurt you to change ACT and ECT sensors, for sure. I've heard a lot about the MSD distributors uh, being junk. Thoughts and ignition system recommendations are your favorite brand. So Chris, uh, I've not had any luck, or any luck, I've not had any bad luck with the MSD stuff myself. Andrew runs it in his car, no issue. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Is there one bare wire at the negative wire where the computer is? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's yeah, there's a wire down there that's not uh, insulated, if if I remember correctly. Is that right, guys? I've got a pre-calibrated uh, mass, but the car still runs too rich. <clears throat> and then invest in a mega squirt and it runs a bit better, but can't get it to idle. Idle's high. Um, so Turbo Bob, you should be able to get that idle down. Um, now, when it comes to uh, an aftermarket uh, computer, you can do whatever you need to do with that, with that throttle blade. So adjust it ever how you need to, man. Uh, you actually, may need to idle or, or remove the throttle blade more, which would idle the car up, so that then you can back the uh, idle air control down. So it's always that give and take, man. Just play with it a little bit, I think you'd be surprised. Rhino 5.0, welcome to the GT package. Oh yeah, I don't ever talk about this anymore, but guys, we do have a membership that you can join. Uh, we got one for $2.99 and one for $5.99. They're the same thing, nothing's any different. It's just a matter of what you feel like you can give to the channel. So it's completely up to you. And um, so the only thing that we do there is you get videos a day early. Sometimes sometimes it's only like four or five hours early, but you get videos before everybody else does. So you pretty much know what's going on before everybody else on YouTube does. So if you'd like to join that, it's really helped us out a lot lately. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, the revenue typically this time of year is kind of down. But you guys have helped, and the revenue is back up, so that allows us to do more, and I do appreciate that. But <clears throat> all right, T Top, we'll see you. Bye bye. I just noticed it last night, and I don't remember. I think, I think that there is one. Pretty sure, man. I think it's the ground. Throttle plate is all the way in. Steel idles high and no vacuum leaks. All right, well, we have to have some sort of air coming in, right? So, more than likely, it's gonna be your idle air control. What do you have your hertz, your frequency set at for your idle air control? I ended up having to set mine at like 400, somewhere in that area. Oh, 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 oh. Um, <clears throat> on your idle air control, have, do you have it inverted? S switch that, whichever way you have it, switch it to either inverted or normal. I can't remember which way it is, but switch that and that should idle the car down. Uh, yeah, maybe that's it. What it's probably doing is holding your idle air control open. Let's see. Uh, yo, I need one of those hats. Uh, to wear in our videos. Yeah, I'll hook you up, Garrett. I assume this is this is Garrett that I'm talking to, I would imagine. So yeah, Garrett, I'll hook you up with some hats. And like I said, guys, go over and check out Second Shift Racing. That's a, a buddy of mine, and Garrett gets some freaking awesome footage. So if you guys like real teal, uh, that's a badass stick shift car, right? Like, that's one of his friends. He videos his car all the time. They all go racing. There you go. Like, matter of fact, I mean, he's been on the channel a couple times. So you guys go check him out. Show them some love. Thanks for keeping the Mustang dream alive. Absolutely, man. <clears throat> I sold Fours for 10 years and a Mustang uh, lover till I die. Absolutely, man. I, I'm the same way. I love these cars and I probably always will. Sometimes I want to throw wrenches at them, but uh, I do love them and I'll always love them. Andrew's going to be the same way. All right. So, uh, Jennifer says pip fault on 88 2.3 help i don't 
And I don't have a clue on that. I don't know anything, not one single thing about a 2.3 liter. Uh, but if anybody can help out Jennifer, then you go right ahead and see if, see if we can get you back going there. Do you have any air shocks on the 65 or just good springs? They're air shocks. Well, they used to be air shocks. They're not air shocks anymore, but they're uh, pretty much destroyed. But yeah, it had air shocks on it. I have an 84 302E303 cam, roller rockers, trick flood push rods, wheel and intake, four barrel holly carb, ish, uh, having issues with it. I tried to get the timing better, but now it's been dieseling any advice. 84 302E cam. So, okay. Hmm. Huh. Carburetor car, trying to get the timing right. It's been dieseling. By dieseling, you mean like laboring, just like, oh, just not running, or dieseling as in like, when you go to cut it off, it wants to like, kick, kind of kick back. I've heard that term used both ways. But if, if the car is just very lethargic, man, keep working with that timing. Or either you could have some valves out of adjustment. That could happen. I'm putting a new carpet to gate, uh, today, the flood guy. Awesome, man, it's about time. That's awesome. I'm glad you're getting your carpet in. <clears throat> All right, I'm having trouble starting my car after installation or installing the Terminator X. Any tips? Meaning your car just won't start? Is that is that what we're we're talking about here? What's a good timing number? Uh, I've got mine set 13 to 14. Yeah, 13 to 14 would be good. Uh, try 12 though. Try 12 and see if you don't like that better. Some some cars do, some cars don't. Um, What's a good timing number? I think I've got mine set at 13 or 14. I just read that. Oh. Oh. Jesus. Um, where are you going to take the Calypso? Uh, no, uh, I don't. So, Fat Boy Fox, no, we're going to take the Retro to uh, the event out in Texas. All right. Let me go back here. Okay, there are settings within that Terminator X that need to be changed immediately. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. So, Mr. Lopez, have you done your TPS yet? TPS reset. It will not start until you do your TPS uh, reset. Not reset, you know what I'm talking about, your setup wizard. You have to do the TPS, or at least I did, and the car wouldn't start, so. Good morning, Bama 5 -0. What's your dream setup for a Fox body? Dream setup for a Fox body would probably be... About a 9 to 1 compression, dark, boss block, push rod, engine. <clears throat> the best of the best bottom end that you can get. Super just just a good combo like I, I don't even i wouldn't sit here and just try to like piece the combo together for you but it's a really good mild combo with like the sound of like an e303 cam almost right nothing nothing crazy it's like an e303 cam sound built bottom end that pretty much you just couldn't destroy um stock ish style lower maybe like a uh uh cobra intake all ported out and everything and then Probably a nice small turbo or either a nice supercharger. Super clean, exhaust out the back, you know, make about six, 700 horsepower. Never have to worry about it, man. That, that would just be my setup. Like, that's what I'm kind of striving for now in a sense, but, uh, but in a perfect world, I just want it to be tame and just nasty. All push rod power, right? And the reason why I say that is because everybody associates high horsepower with a push rod car as being not drivable and obnoxious. It doesn't have to be. It's just the way we choose to do it most of the time. Uh, brutal for president. <laughs> Got my vote. Yeah. How difficult uh, is it to supercharge a ten and a half to one motor? Not just keep the boost down and put some good fuel in it, man. You'll be fine. You're gonna make some serious power if you if you're ten and a half to one. 
but you can absolutely do it. E85 would be a good option for you or just some race gas or something like that. Uh, but as long as you got it, you know, you keep the boost down, this thing probably will live for a little while. Thoughts about building a Resto Mod Fox old chassis new power plant? Mm, yeah, we thought about that on the 65, maybe doing like a 3.5 EcoBoost swap. So, may still do that. And I actually really like that idea. I know it would get a lot of hate, but I don't care. It's mine. So, like, at, my 65 is not for everybody else. Some of these cars that we do on the channel, you know, uh, and, and some of the things that we do are more crowd pleasing, if you will mass appealing but my 65 is just going to be the way that me and my dad want to do it so um 100 and i don't have a look I, guys i don't have a problem with doing things that you guys like because typically it's stuff that i like too so like you know how you don't you don't like one thing in life you're like you know what i could could go that way or i could go that way i'm not really sure well whichever way you guys lean a lot of times is the way that i go which i'm fine with anyway but probably not on all right, guys. Well, look, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up today. Um, I'm going to go hang out inside. But I do appreciate everybody stopping by. No giveaways. We are done with the giveaways for this month. So uh, we'll get back on that next month. And I may have may have a surprise for you guys. Remember, we got the Fox Days of Christmas coming up here real soon. So that's going to be awesome. We're going to get started with that. I'm going to start kind of uh, uh, hoarding up some, some uh, Christmas gifts for you guys, if you will. I'm going to be kind of keep him over there in the corner but myself neo is going to be doing that I'm not sure if foxcast is going to join in or not i know he wanted to but uh ought to be some really nice gifts getting ready to be giveaway yeah man i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up catch you guys in the next one hello bye bye you gotta say and as always thanks for watching and as always thanks for watching